So I guess we can start now. It's like one minute to start and uh, people will join us um, in the meantime, I think. Um, and good evening, everyone. It's so great to see you all here together. Um, it's a lot of people, 32, wow. Um, and I would like to welcome all of you for this presentation organized jointly by the Women's Federation for World Peace Europe and Eurasia. Um, I'm Erica and I'll be the MC for today's session. And uh, note that we will be recording um, the session as it already is recording. Um, and so before we begin, I would like to share my presentation. Just give me some moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so before we begin uh, this whole session, I would like to emphasize that this is part of a series of lectures uh, focusing on topics related to identity, health, and relationships. Um, it is based on the International Education Foundation materials and aims to promote true values among students and to help them build wonderful, happy lives in the future. Um, and this being the second session, the first one um, was about the, difference, the differences between true love and falling in love. Um, and uh, yeah, let's start with the brief introduction, introduction of the program. Um, this curr curriculum is held by the Women's Federation for World Peace and covers important aspects of puberty, marriage, and personal development. Uh, it's designed to engage students and provide them with valuable insights and knowledge. Our present presenter today will be Mrs. Holga Van Ulinskaya, um, who will be sharing her expertise on this subject for approximately 40 minutes. And after this presentation, we will open the floor to a question and answer, answer session. And um, we will have some time for um, a meaningful discussion. I encourage you all to participate by asking questions and sharing your uh, thoughts after the presentation. And also you can uh, always write down your questions in the chat box during the presentation so you don't forget them. Um, once the Q&A session concludes, uh, I can kindly request um, that you give us your feedback um, on what touched you the most during the presentation and, and how it can be used for moral education in your country. Um, so through this presentation, we hope, you, we, we hope you can unlock the secrets of true love. Um, and uh, yeah, so today's uh, session, for today's session, we will have as a topic love and sexuality. So, and without further ado, let's walk, uh, let's welcome Mrs. Olga Va Va Vakulinskaya. I'm sorry, this name is kind of difficult for me as I am Portuguese. Um, but yeah, uh, she's a renowned moral education specialist and the Women's Federation for World Peace International Vice President for Eurasia. She's an exper experienced practitioner who has worked in the field of moral education for over 25 years and the author of children's books on moral education as well. Uh, Mrs. Olga is married and the mother of th three daughters forming a beautiful family uh, and with a unique perspective on fostering love, compassion and ethical values in our lives. She brings to us a wealth of knowledge and practical insights in what promises to be a thought-provoking session. So, Ms. Holga, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Dear Erika, you are very beautiful and great MC. <laughs> I am very happy to have you here. And also, I'm very, very grateful to Miti Toma, yeah, who made basically this programs possible. So, And I'm very, very grateful to all of you who could join today and also to those even who will watch this presentation later through video. So I will just start sharing our presentation. Mm -hmm. so you will see. Okay. 
So this is our topic today. And uh, honestly speaking, I can say that for me, this particular topic is the most important of, out of all the series of presentations that we have. Uh, I can also say that uh, I feel that I can have now a very happy family. I can have my wonderful husband. I can have love that is really growing. I can say each year, so I can feel more and more love towards my husband, and I feel the same from his side. And we see our daughters raised basically on these values, and now all of them are building their own families. So and I feel I owe all of this, this kind of understanding that I got through this kind of uh, lectures, through this kind of presentations, through this kind of wisdom. That's why, because I am grateful myself, really, in my life, that's why this is really my passion. I really want to be able to share this, especially with parents, also with younger generation. Why I want to do that? It's very simple. I just want to see, and I'm sure as all of you, I just want to see more happy people. And I just want to see more happy families. Really, yeah, so they can be built. Yeah, so people can really experience this true love in their lives. So let me just share uh, some values about it. So in this particular lecture, in this particular presentation, we'll talk more about the value of sexual relationship, uniqueness of sexual relationship, and how to really protect it, yeah, and use it in the most beautiful way. Because actually, when some people think about sex, uh, many people might have some feeling, oh, this is something sometimes not so good or dangerous or anyway some there is some association some negative association sometimes but actually if we do use it properly if we do have a proper attitude actually can you hear me well i just want to make sure yes okay so if we have proper attitude to this kind of most very very valuable thing a sexual relationship then we can be truly happy and this sexual relationship that can be something that can really enrich our life, that can make us feel love, that can make us possible, yeah? So we can, we can be uh, able to love and to be loved through this relationship. This is something very, very beautiful, but with one condition, when there is real love, when people don't just misuse each other or use each other for their own, own interest, but when people, express their deep love, their heart through this relationship. And when they have motivation to really make their partner happy, truly happy, then two people, man and woman, can become really one in this kind of love. And I myself can testify, and I know also some other people who I think would say the same, that when people really love each other and unite in this beautiful relationship, then they can feel so happy that they can have feel completely different feelings. I know some people who even cry, <laughs> but not because they feel pain or they feel sad, but they cry because of happiness. So if you feel if you have ever felt something <laughs> similar in your life, maybe you can just write later or, or share with me later. Yeah, I would be grateful to hear. But this is possible. So what I mean, this is very precious. This is very unique. But this should be shared really between only two partners, one man and one woman, based on absolute love and also mutual trust. Yeah, so that people can have this confidence that I will never be betrayed in this relationship. I will always be loved in this relationship. One more thing about sexual relationship, and it's very, very important, that particularly through sexual relationship, a new life can be born. And this is beautiful. And this is how it should be. And unfortunately, you know, many stories when people just have relationship, but they don't even think about this possibility that this relationship might give birth to one more human being. And then people just use each other in this relationship. But then when they find out when that yes, there is a baby, they, they don't want this baby. And honestly speaking, I know personally some people who told me they are already grown up people, most of them, or young people. And they told me, you know, one time in a quarrel between father and mother, 
and just there was a quarrel between father and mother and just in the family and they just told in front told to chase or told me that basically we didn't want you we, we were not planning you just you happen to be in our life and now we have so much trouble do you know how these people feel this shouldn't be like that this shouldn't be like that each child that appears in this world should be fruit of love should be wanted yeah and this child can be so happy and now you know the more and more psych say, uh, psychologists and medical people they're talking about this that this little little tiny creature <laughs> this little little tiny being inside of mother can already feel can already feel whether he is he or she whether they are loved whether they are wanted and when this baby appears how wonderful it would be that all of parents would really care from yeah from this time when this very very little human being is inside the womb they can care they can give love and they can really maybe sing songs and wait for this miracle to appear i can share honestly with you because we have three daughters yeah and we are absolutely grateful for them this is our biggest present from god i can say yeah we are very very happy but honestly speaking i i, I have always wanted also to have sons and this was my biggest dream for 10 years. I, I just wanted to have a son. And I was waiting for the son every month. I was checking, I was doing tests. I was hoping every month, no fail for 10 years, I was waiting for the son to come. But I didn't come. Anyway, just maybe God had some other idea. <laughs> but what I realized during these 10 years, you know what? I could feel from inside of my heart that each person appearing in this world, this is a truly miracle. This is a miracle that this baby could be, con could be conceived. Second miracle is that this baby could grow healthily inside the womb. Isn't it a miracle? So many things can happen on the way, yeah? It's already a miracle. So, so now when I look at each person, it doesn't matter what nationality, so when I look at some person, it doesn't matter old or young or little, and I look at this person and I look at the, this person and feel you are a miracle. You made it. <laughs> you appeared, you know. And that's like how wonderful it would be if all people felt like that. Yeah. That's why before entering this kind of relationship, sexual relationship that can give birth life to somebody else, it's better to think very deeply. Am I ready for that? What if God gives me this present, this miracle. Am I ready to take care? Am I ready to take responsibility? Am I ready to love? Because this is part of it. Yeah? This is a consequence, a beautiful consequence of sexual relationship. This would be wonderful if we could really appreciate this, deeply appreciate this. And one more thing. You know, I give a lot of lectures, maybe you have heard, I give a lot of lectures at schools for children, high, high school children. And when I talk to them, and sometimes I see children in front of me, maybe they are 12, no, maybe with this lecture, of course, maybe they're a little bit older, like maybe 15, 16 and older. And when I look at them, and then I ask them, but have you ever thought, yeah? Have you ever thought that from you, a new lineage starts? So that your behavior now, how you live, what, that, what kind of choices you make, this will influence not only your happiness, of course your happiness depends on your choices, but this will influence your children, but then this will influence also your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. For example, if we manage to build a truly happy family and we can show a real practical example to our children, then wouldn't our children want to create this kind of happy family? There is a very big chance for that, right? If they get inspired, if they see that this love, this is not just some myth, just somebody believes in something, yeah? But this is practical. They can see how happy father and mother are. Then they want to build this kind of family. And then if our children manage to build this kind of families, then they can show this beautiful example to grandchildren and then to great-grandchildren. So this means 
that even the whole lineage starts from sexual relationship and from love between one man and one woman. And it can be a completely different lineage. It can be kind of beautiful lineage. Yeah, and it depends on us, on our choices. That this is also very important. Before entering this relationship, sexual relationship, we need to think deeply what that really means, how valuable, how amazing this really is. And that's why if we use this gift, this valuable, precious sexual relationship properly, then through the sexual relationship, we can realize, we can substantially feel and experience true and growing love, everlasting love. We can build truly happy family and we can be truly happy. But if you misuse the same relationship, if you misuse sexual relationship, if you don't understand value of the sexual relationship, if you don't think deeply before having this relationship, and if you don't take responsibility, then what do we see? We see a completely different picture. Opposite picture of happiness. That people can be completely unhappy. Hearts can be broken, and we can see many, many consequences. So we will talk a little bit in more detailed, yeah? uh, more, more, we'll go in, into detail yeah, in this program. Actually, before kind of, of course, uh, it's, it's, it can be a little bit different, like 50s, 60s, but still, yeah, if we think of our history, actually joint history, it doesn't matter what country, if you think about this uh, kind of age of si 60s or 50s, then actually more, many more families really kept strong family values. Many, many more families thought like this, okay, purity before marriage is important, fidelity is absolutely important. And if somebody would have sexual relationship before marriage or outside of marriage, then this was not welcome at all yeah? at, that, at that time. But then step by step, different ideas appeared. And then starting from 60s, yeah, this kind of movement of sexual kind of liberation appeared. Yeah? So free sex idea appeared in the minds of people. And this was kind of covered under different motives. Yeah? People were, young people were talking about love and freedom. Sounds very good. Yeah? This sounds good. Love and freedom. This sounds wonderful. Why not? But what was meant and what was practiced starting from that time, in many cases, of course, not in all cases, but in many cases, under love, people understood sex. Under freedom, irresponsibility. So kind of sex without any responsibility. And more and more, this became accepted step by step. It took years but it became more and more accepted in the society. And this was not something unusual anymore. Yeah? People started changing their minds. Now you can even see parents in our society. Nowadays, we can see many parents who don't say anything to their children and even encourage their children, you know, kind of to try to live with somebody, to try to have sexual relationship with somebody. And why? because parents don't know the consequences themselves. Now there is this kind of chaos in minds. There is no clear understanding. What is good, what is right. And that's why it's very important, at least, you know, when I come to school or college, and when I talk to young people, you know what I start my kind of presentation with or my talk, usually, honestly speaking, maybe I have told you before, this is not usually a lecture. <laughs> this is conversation, yeah? Like I ask questions, children answer, this is dialogue, yeah? And this is very precious. But what I tell them at the beginning, I say, you know, I haven't come here to teach you how to live. I haven't come here to punish you or to tell you that you're completely wrong. I have come here to give you information. And hopefully you can just use this information so that you can make free choice, right choice in your life. Because who can protect you? Who can protect you in this world? Can parents protect us in all the situations? Like, for example, I have three daughters, they are now students. I love them more than anything in the world. Yeah? 
There is nothing more precious than children for me. But can I, as a mother, and also with my husband, can we, as parents, protect our children in all the situations? Can we be with our daughters 24 hours a day? Can we? No, right? So who can protect? Only people themselves, right? Only people themselves can make right choices and they can guide their life, yeah? In that direction or that direction, yeah? Thoughts happiness or thoughts unhappiness. It's really up to them. That's why they need information. Somebody needs to talk to them. And who, what do you think? Who, who should be first to talk about these topics? A lecturer? I can't hear you now, but I'm sure you have your answer in your hand. Parents should talk to children, should be able to talk, to explain yeah, these kind of things to the children. But nowadays, unfortunately, many parents don't know themselves. This is somebody, somebody should be in this kind of position to share sincerely, openly, and let them think and let them make their own choice. That's why, unfortunately, this kind of movement for sexual liberation yeah, destroyed traditional norms and, and brought up many, many problems. Yeah? We will talk about it more in detail. Yeah? And then that's why in this kind of 50s, 60s, yes, there were also sexually transmitted diseases. But well-known were mostly two of them. Yeah? Syphilis and gonorrhea. If we talk about now, after, nowadays and starting maybe with 2000 more than 25 more than 25 diseases that are spread why in the whole world basically yeah. and the statistic is really terrible and when people get these things then there are very very serious consequences and people's lives can change and why is it growing like that? Why is there so many cases in all the countries, all over the world, the same situation? Why is there so many cases? You know, because no, one, one reason is maybe people even don't know that they have it, yeah? And they have different partners and have relationships, sexual relationships with people. But on the other hand, please think about it. People who first of all think of, of themselves, not of other people. Who first of all think, okay, sex is something to have fun. Yeah, sex, sex is something to yeah, use some other person for me. Then even if they find out that they have this kind of disease, would they stop right away? Would they be so serious and responsible to say, okay, I, yeah, I'm sick now, so I can't hurt anybody else? Are there many people like that? Unfortunately, there are many irresponsible people who even knowing that they have such very serious disease that might lead to even not having children or even very, very serious consequences, yeah, like cancer, they don't stop. And they continue their lifestyle because they first of all think of themselves. That's just to show some statistic. According to the World Health Organization, every day, just think about it, just for one moment, think about it. Every day, there are more than 1 million new cases of infection with sexual transmitted diseases. It means lives. It means real lives. When we see just numbers, okay, this is just numbers, and many young people think, uh, okay, I see the numbers, but I would never have it, right? We have this tendency, people have this tendency to think, yeah, there are some problems, but I can live as I want, but I will never face any difficult situation. But unfortunately, it's not the case. And so many people suffer from it. I, can, I would like to share with you just one story that was shared to me by one of my close friends, actually. I, I got to know this girl maybe 15 years ago, so and still now we keep in touch. So she just told me a very small story, but that really changed her life. One time, she was just 18 years old. And she just quarreled, you know, sometimes things happen in the family. And she just quarreled and she had some conflict with her parents. Then she slapped the door and she went to some nearby cafe because she didn't want to talk to anybody or to see anybody. She just wanted to be alone. But then just one very pretty young man decided to talk to her. And he looked so nice. 
and he seemed like to be very uh, careful and he was listening to her and he paid attention to her and he bought her some nice coffee and he kind of yeah expressed interest to her and then she felt so comfortable at that moment okay parents don't understand but he understands and then she decided not to return home that night she did this, decided to spend one night with him she didn't want to separate with him so she, she had sexual relationship only for one night the next day he had to leave because he had some work in another city he left she stayed and just one or two months later she found out because she felt something yes if she felt some symptoms then she went to the doctor and she found out that she had a very serious this kind of sexual transmitted disease and the doctor told her we will try to heal it but this one is basically untreatable i don't know if i say it uh, in, uh, properly in english but you understand it can't be treated but we will try and i know because i was near her at that time even now but at that time too and i know that she did several operations and she she was really trying hard to heal but for many years it seemed like there was no no result and the doctor told her i'm sorry but it seems like you can't have children and that's, that's the case of many, many of these kind of situations. One mistake, one night, just because of emotions, yeah? just because of the conflict with parents. And then her life changed completely. Yeah? That's why just it's important to tell our young people about it. They should at least know. We cannot make them do what we want to do, right? We are not able. And maybe this shouldn't be. They have their own choice. But in order to make choices, at least they have right to know the truth. Okay? You make your choice. It can be like that. It can be like that. Think. Think and then make your choice. Okay, let's keep going. No, just I will not stay long on the sexual transmitted diseases, but... Of course, which one of these consequences is kind of most serious? Of course, cancer is very serious. Recently, I also heard one uh, talk of a very famous doctor in our country. Very, very famous. He practically works with patients. Yeah? He is not just professor, though he is a professor. He gives a lot of lectures. But he is a real doctor that works in hospital. And he told us, you know, when I come to some ward in a clinic, and I see in front of myself many girls, you know, who are under 19, many of them, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And when this very beautiful young girl asks me, doctor, will, will this be okay? Can I be healed? Or how long can I live? And this, most of these girls, they have cancer. And the cause of that cancer was sexual transmitted disease. And then he said, when I look at this girl as a father, he's also a father, of course, I want to tell her, no, no, don't worry, it will be fine. Yeah, of course, I want to tell her, but how can I lie? Because I know that this girl would pass to spiritual world in a month. I know that because I saw many girls like that. But what if somebody had won them before? Yeah? What if their mother would tell their daughter, their, their daughter? when they were maybe 12, 13, when they were just in this age. Because children don't know what they might face just by having sexual relationship with someone. One more thing, yeah, this kind of teenage pregnancy or even unwanted pregnancy. This is a very big problem. Yeah? Also, according to World Health Organization, about 57 million abortions are made in the world every year. If you think of about World War II, how many people died during four years of World War II in the whole world? This is less. You, you can see the numbers on the internet. This is about 47 or something million. Yeah? This is less than the abortion numbers. And of course, also these beautiful young girls, they don't know what they're going to face. I talked to many girls and I talked even to many adult women who told me I regret so much. If I could only go to that time, to the past, and I could do it differently, and I could keep my baby, because this baby keeps coming to me, to my in my dreams, 
in my heart. One, one of my friends, actually very good friends, she's a very good lady, amazingly good lady. But she told me, this is something that I can't forgive myself for. This is still in my heart. Yeah? That was the girls should be warned. Because many of them, many of these beautiful girls, they do the abortion because their partner told her that, they, that he doesn't want to care. Unfortunately, we know that there are parents, many parents like that, who say, oh, it's your problem. You got a baby now, but we didn't approve it. So it's your problem. We don't want to help you. We don't want another. You, we are taking care of you as a child. We don't want to take care of one more child. Then the girl feels, okay, there is no, no way. Yeah. And then she does it. But then in many cases, you know that. I don't have to even tell you details. But you know that in many cases, one of the also consequences is that later, this beautiful girl can't have any children. This is very huge problem. Yeah, that's why this should be thought of before having any sexual relationship. And this should be educated in families. This is a very serious matter. I would like to read you. I don't know if you have seen this translation. I even don't know who first <laughs> created this poem, but I would, uh, I would like to read it to you. It's a little bit disturbing here. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a, a soul that couldn't be born. I'm a rootless soul named No. I'm a pricky cold in the doctor's hand. I'm hope destroyed without much regret. May your life be busy, father and mother, and you can live like others without feeling bothered. I love you anyway, more than you can think. Even you have, if you have forgotten this great thing. Yeah. That's why, anyway, this, there are things to think about. Yeah. And now children have right to know and have right to be protected, protected by us. That's why I believe that we just can't keep quiet. We have no right to keep quiet, I think, you know? We have no right. Many times after I uh, give these lectures, not many times, actually all the time, I can just show you how it looks. You can't maybe see it properly. These are all children's reflections. I have more than like this. Just on little papers. I will, I will later read you some of them. And uh, you know what is the most painful thing for me to get in this kind of reflection? One sentence. A few times I, I received it from children and they wrote to me in these reflections. Why haven't you come before? Why didn't you come two years ago? And yeah, why didn't you tell us this two years ago and then I wouldn't have this problem in my life? Yeah. Why hasn't anybody? Yeah. Why, why hasn't anybody told us about these things? Why has, hasn't anybody warned us about these things? Because I feel now so much pain. This is the children of the age of, uh, from 14 till uh, 17, sharing these kind of things. Yeah? That's why I think they, they have right to be protected. I will not stop long time here, but you know that AIDS problem is not solved. It's not solved. It's also spreading. And one of the uh, main kind of ways, yeah, how it's transmitted, there are several, you know, yeah, through blood, through drugs, yeah, from infected mother. But the main one is sexual intercourse with an infected partner. And main problem with AIDS, you know, is that it can't be even kind of revealed during five years. And how often do people go to clinic and check themselves whether they have it or not? Do we do it every month? Do we do it every year to check whether people have this problem? No, right? At least as, as I know, people go and, and check whether they have this HIV, yeah, or not. No, for example, if they need to do some surgery, yeah, to have some surgery in clinic or some, some reason, there should be some serious reason why people do it. And that's how many people infect each other without knowing. But I would like to share with you one more thing. Because actually there are many, many lecturers who talk about sexual transmitted diseases, about AIDS, yes, and about even abortion. But not so many people, I can say even very few people, 
talk about more psychological consequences of this kind of free sex relationship. Actually, even if you think of this term free sex, just think about it. Is it free sex when people are afraid, when people have fear during this intercourse? People have fear to get pregnant. People have fear to be abandoned. People have fear to be, uh, yeah, to, to have, uh, yeah, to have some problem with that, yeah, some sexual transmitted disease, disease or something. Is it free sex? Do people feel free in this relationship? In what kind of relationship can people feel really free? Unfortunately, yeah, I can't hear you now, but I'm sure you know, you understand. In what kind of relationship, sexual relationship, can people feel really free? Only between, yeah, in the relationship between a loving husband, loving wife, who completely trust each other, and who completely feel, fine, yeah, have fidelity towards each other. Do you agree? This is free. This means freedom. This means I love you and I'm here for you. And if God gives us a baby, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. This means free. And what they call free, this is not free relationship. This is something that can cause huge heartbreaking situation. Yeah. It can cause huge problems. That's why when people, young people just have this relationship you know i what i heard from many teenagers or many young people they said yeah but just we wanted to try this relationship is it okay to try this relationship aren't this relationship too serious to try and do we want ourselves yeah to be used for a test kind of for someone so that somebody can try us and to just to have experience through us do we want it do we want our children to be used like that? Do we? No, right? But children don't understand. They just think it's interesting. They just think, okay, that's something. Or even, you know, there is this kind of myth. There is this kind of tendency, very, very stupid tendency when, you know, in classes, even when there are children like 14, 16 years old, when someone keeps really purity and believes in true love and really waits for their true partner yeah he wants to keep purity for this true partner then many times they're being bullied they're being mocked they're being humiliated and there are even different names oh kind of you you are virgin and this is this sounds like something bad actually we should tell our children this is something to be proud of, really. I'm sorry, I might cry now because this is very serious. I, I got also in this kind of lists from children, I got I got several of them, actually many of them, when they were tried, you know, because they even can't share sometimes. They don't know with whom to share. Then they write to someone or some teacher came from outside, yeah? Lecturer came from outside and they're just sharing their whole story in these little things. I will read you some now, yeah? But sometimes I get this kind of message, you know, in the class, my classmates found out that I keep purity because I really believe I want to wait for my true partner. And I am being really humiliated in class. I'm being persecuted in the class. What shall I do? Yeah. That's why somebody should come and tell them clearly. Yeah. There are different values. And why do those people kind of try to put those pure children down this kind of free sex people why do they try to put pure children down why do they try to humiliate them to laugh at them do you know why because they're happy and they want to make others happy you know when i'm happy for example for example i'm, I'm happy and that's it's really true i'm happy in, in my family then naturally i want other people to be happy <laughs> Naturally, I want other people to also be happy in families and to create these beautiful families. But why are those people so aggressive towards pure children? Because something is wrong. Because they feel that they have lost something very serious. And they are not happy. And if they see other people who might be much happier than them, and who might create much happier families than them, then they try to pull them to this other side. To put them down to humiliate and to make them finally yeah 
also have free uh, or not free early sexual relationship yeah because people need to think about it yeah that's why when the young children have this relationship then they have feel anxiety actually about different things and they feel guilt and shame and heart is often traumatized i i saw one girl this is real i am not lying here to you I just, I'm sharing, if I share some story, please believe me, this is a story that I heard from a child. I didn't take this story from a book. One time, when a young girl came up to me after such lecture at school. She was just uh, 15 years old. You know what she told me? Or maybe, maybe 15 or 16. And what she told me, you know, honestly speaking, I really feel so much connected to what you have said in the lecture. And I feel so much pain because, honestly speaking, before 15 years old, I really believed in true love. I really was looking forward to meet one person in my life. And I kept my purity. But one time, I just met one guy who looked so kind of handsome. And somehow I fell in love. And I made this mistake. But I felt so much unhappy in this relationship. Because he just misused me. And you know what happened to me after that? I just stopped caring about myself. I stopped believing in myself and just said, I, 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 I lost my dignity as a young lady. And then I allowed other boys to also use me because I didn't care anymore. And because of that, my, because before that actually case, she was an excellent student. She had only ace, yeah, only best results at school. After that, she barely graduated from school. Yeah. And that's why we talked to her, yeah? And I tried to, to tell her, and this is very serious, please, it's not your fault. Nobody, unfortunately, nobody had ever told you about the consequences, right? Nobody could protect you. That's why, please make a new start. Please make a new start to believe in yourself. This is very important. It's not your fault. And we need to tell our children that whatever happens to them, we will be always able to embrace them. We will be always willing to help them in any situation, whatever they face. One time I also had one girl after the same kind of lecture. Lecture finished, she came to me, came up to me and she said, may I please talk to you a little bit? And then of course I have to ask the permission from the school director, yeah? And when they uh, allowed me, then I had a separate room from her. And you know, this, this little girl, she was just 15. And she started crying and crying and crying. And she told me for seven years, she couldn't tell her story to anyone because she was afraid of her parents. Is that normal? It shouldn't be like that. We should tell our children, we are here for them. We will always love them, whatever happens. Yeah. And they should be embraced and they should be protected. And if you allow me, I would like to read you just a few stories. Can I? Because I feel this is very important. Just a few stories of the children. My, uh, I'm just reading now here. Yeah. So my opinion after the lecture has really changed. Though I can honestly share that my opinion had changed long time ago because I was really hurt badly by many cases in my life. And everything you had shared here in this lecture actually is connected to me. I, st I started having, so I had my first sexual relationship at the age of 13. Honestly speaking, in my soul, I still feel this pain and this, does, this pain doesn't go away. Maybe you can't believe I am now 16 and a half years old, but I still can't forget many moments of my sexual life that brought me so much pain, especially in my heart. These are children writing. And I'm sure in many cases, they can't share with parents, unfortunately. Yeah? Just a few more. Honestly speaking, now I feel bad about sexual relationship. I feel this is a very scary thing because you don't love a person. He just said it. She just sharing her, her story. You don't love a person, but you are being talked into. And then they tell, tell her, this is not bad. Everything will be fine. 
you shouldn't be scared you will feel satisfied you will feel a lot of joy but in reality and then she writes three points yeah in reality this is completely different yeah and just maybe one more because i would like to share more but this is this is this is a real stories there's a re real people and real children before the lecture i was thinking that sexual relationship before marriage basically this is something normal why not but after the lecture i could change my opinion because honestly speaking i was also disappointed in myself first of all because i had this mistake i made this mistake in my life and i really regret about it and in my life i still many years passed but i still have so much pain because i was just misused that person my partner he didn't need me really he just used me yeah, things like that anyway if i have more time if you like i can read more but i need to watch the time and just one more because you know when children face this relationship oh, sorry here when the children have this relationship then one of the consequences and you have heard about it oh why is it this mm -hmm. And you have heard about it many young people even because they feel so much pain and they don't know with whom to share what do they do children in the whole world not only in one country what do many children do unfortunately when they can't find any way out when they can't find any support they commit suicide that's why they need to be taken care of they need to be they need also to care of each other and just uh, one more testimony i would like to read uh, well, five okay. minutes you. um yeah 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 you can have more five minutes okay yes but... yes mm -hmm. yeah okay I, I will try to just conclude yeah yeah and then she, she just writes i was most of all moved about the moment of suicide we don't have any separate lecture about suicide but this is mentioned here because i tell the children please there is always way out even if your parents couldn't support you at some time, surely you will find good people who will be able to understand. Just wait a little bit and look for such people a little bit more. And then this girl just writes, before, I, I was always thinking, I had always thought that this is the only way out, she means suicide. But now I changed my mind. And this is very important. We need to tell them everything is possible. So basically I'll come to conclusion. And one more uh, consequence of this kind of free sex relationship, this is problem in the future family, because it's very difficult to forget. Yeah, it's very difficult to forget what happened. It's very difficult not to compare our husband with all the previous partners. Yeah, and that's why it's easier also not to keep fidelity. Yeah, this is this is very serious. And that's why we need to help these children to overcome this pain and to be able to make a new step and to learn to trust again because and they need to understand that they have value and even if they feel that they completely lost their dignity still they are very precious somebody should tell them you are very precious and you can make a new start in your life yeah because this has the consequences that shouldn't be okay and then just what is the way out there is a way out of all of these problems just to stay pure just to keep your dignity as a person and to prepare yourself for meeting this one eternal partner in lifetime and how beautiful is this when a girl is waiting for him and preparing to give him all the best and a boy is preparing to meet her my husband and i we believed in true love honestly speaking when we were even teenagers but many of our classmates laughed at us oh that's not possible what are you thinking this is not possible this is stupid yeah even you know i was told by my classmates oh if you don't practice for example kissing with somebody your husband will not love you your husband will kick you out <laughs> you know stupid things yeah how precious are we how how grateful are we now yeah with my husband for example that we could keep purity for each other and we can share it honestly with our children okay this is just conclusion that's why if someone has made a mistake has made a mistake please don't accuse yourself because you didn't know please forgive yourself and make a new start 
and do your maximum best to become the most wonderful person and then you will just draw this true love into your life. Basically, that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> this will be my conclusion. Yeah, and that. Please, yeah, I, if there are some, I know that there are some young people here. Please, even if you understand it yourself, please share it with your friends. Please give them a chance to understand. And if you are parents who join this program, please share it with other parents even, or share it with other children, because let's protect all our children together and help them build most wonderful families. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> I will conclude with that. Thank you, Olga. Uh, can you? Yes, stop sharing. Yes. Stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Um, yeah, such an insightful presentation. Uh, really, truly inspiring. Um, it was really interesting how you explained that rather than being a lecture, um, let's invite discussion and uh, conversations that can be enlightening from parents to children, um, really creating a safe uh, space to let them share their thoughts. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, and we will now move on to the question and answer session. So feel, please, please feel free to raise your hand or uh, type your questions in the chat box. Um, yeah, this is now a safe space for sharing. Yes, Marcella raised her hand. Yes, uh, Olga, thank you very much. Am I here, hurt, yeah. It's great to uh, see you and I would like to express really my gratitude and love to you and uh, to your passion because I understand it very well and uh, I only can confirm because I've been uh, uh, also working and teaching uh, uh, teens um, um, pure love and uh, character education for 20 years and I approached 40,000 teenagers and uh, I just want uh, really to, to say that it's exactly as you were talking about here, yeah? that there are many, many, many stories, a lot of uh, really heartbreaks. And uh, uh, exactly as you said, uh, many, many, many expressed, it's a pity you did not come earlier. Yeah, this is exactly what came to me and also, uh, I made, uh, made a questionnaires and I can say that like um, from 65 to 95% of teenagers dependent on um, uh, type of school and age, but minimum was 65% express and mostly was like more than 80% expressed that they need much support to keep their purity. And I think this is very, very, very important because the society offers just condom, contraception, and there is no condom to protect the heart. And heartbreaking is really the worst of worst. And I, I only wanted to thank you. And I feel the same passion, even though I don't do it already for eight years because it was destroyed by government. I'm sorry because I still have the passion for youth and I think this is very important, most important thing, how we educate future generations. And I wanted just to really express my gratitude and thank you for your passion. And I wish we could cooperate in the future because this is still the most essential issue in the society. So thank you very much. I only can confirm each of your words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I know your heart. I see that Joseph also wants to speak. So uh, hello, to, here is Joseph from Austria. I hope, do you hear me well? Yeah. 
I would be interested is, uh, because as I'm dealing with several uh, since several years here in Austria with with uh, with uh, uh, with that issue, especially as in the in the in the education system. And uh, as you might be aware of, uh, you mean in Europe, uh, uh, there's uh, there's very very strongly in all in many countries actually uh, the emphasis. Uh, uh, for 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 sex education, also to already to 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 to, to young schools, uh, to young to young kids already, to kindergarten kids already, and that's really that's really uh, simply terrible because as I say, they they only teach that that garbage that that free sex is a uh, uh, in, uh, in, and so I would like to know first of all, uh, first of all. Is there also in in Russia as, uh, something as in school offered like this as 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 it is here in in, in uh, European countries and how and and how well are uh, is the the character education uh, character education which you are basically teaching how well is that uh, received or how how much can you do that is in schools this is my question yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Your comment this is really important. Uh, what you said, uh, actually, uh, in 1990s, something like that, there was an attempt to kind of have something similar to sex, sex education here, but fortunately, it was stopped because people could understand what was brought. Yeah, so and uh, all this kind of advertisement about condoms, yeah, so that it can, can't lead to anything good. So now in uh, no schools in Russia, you can see anything like that. So all of those kind of programs were, pro uh, programs were completely forbidden. Yeah. Like if you, if uh, there are some programs that teach uh, family values, because uh, in our country, this is kind of main topic now, like strong family values. Yeah, then uh, th this would be welcomed by school. Of course, no, not all organizations are welcomed. You need to find uh, your way, yeah, but uh, th th this can be welcome, but no sex education, especially free sex, or, you know, all this kind of okay. different, different ways, yeah, of approaching this, you know what I'm talking about, this is completely banned, yeah, so no propaganda like this is allowed, yeah, but for us, uh, actually, uh, this is possible through personal also communication, so if people already know what kind of programs we are doing, and if parents, I, I really believe in power of the parents. If parents say we need it, then it's possible. Yeah, that, that, that's my experience. Yes, for example, the one school, yes, yeah, the director was kind of hesitating, didn't know whether these programs are needed or not. But then parents gathered together, they even put the signatures, we want these values. And that is what possible. Yeah, somehow that's why I know the situation in uh, Europe that it's not easy and maybe even not possible at all to get into schools. Th that's what I heard. But I believe uh, very, very sincerely that if we work through parents, communities, if first of all we share these values with parents, then this is also possible. This could be a way. Or one more way, I just had this idea and I, I believe this is, at least if someone tries to do that, if uh, some young person who understands these values very, very well and would like to give this kind of presentation just comes to the same school that he graduated from mm -hmm. and say, and if he has good relationship with the principal and teachers and say, I just want to be useful to my school. This is not some organization coming to school. This is just a graduate student who wants to be useful to younger children. Yeah, I think this could, could work. I hope it could work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Joseph, for your uh, question. Um, I see that we have one question here in the chat that says, I would like to ask Olga how does she also, does she have also presentation for parents to be guided how to protect their children? Yeah, we actually, we, we work uh, with parents also both online or sometimes we are invited just you know, in offline yeah, to talk to parents. Also, we cooperate with different parents organizations. This is good. Parents associations and they sometimes invite us. And actually, this approach can be different, 
for example, uh, on some presentations, basically we can share the same material to parents, yeah, or and give some examples and read these papers that their children wrote, yeah, so many children wrote. And this really many times moves their hearts. Another way is, a different way is uh, that we basically make just a presentation, I have it just, where we raise different topics connected to teenagers, including this one that we talked today. And, and then we share about them and we uh, sincerely, yeah, and they can ask questions. This is kind of like par parents meeting, yeah. So, and, and this is very well, at least uh, in, uh, here, it's very well accepted by parents, by many parents. Of course, not all understand it. It's, it's uh, yeah, clear, but many, many parents do understand how important this is if you talk to them, yeah, because sometimes they don't know themselves. They just don't know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I see that I didn't marry. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm from Chris. I wanted to ask you if this content, what you just uh, teach, taught us, it's very, very important. If we can give it also to our friends from different churches. Yes. Yeah. You know what we just practiced also here? Uh, it's just a suggestion that maybe if you could just share with your um, contents first, that actually there, are, there is this kind of material and we could do even online, you know, kind of masterclass, that's what we do actually, for those mm -hmm. who would like to give these lectures. I would like them to hear this first and then all of them who participated, maybe they're psychologists, maybe they're teachers, mm -hmm. they can get this for free, <laughs> this material. Just, of course, it's, it's good that they mentioned this belongs to Women's Federation, yeah? But we are interested in this so because we can't reach all the children, right? Even in our own countries, we can't do that. That's why we need to cooperate with psychologists, teachers, and parents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I see that no one else has their hands up and there's no more questions in the chat. And I also have a question that was made um, that someone ask me to ask. <laughs> um, and this is the question. How do you think the accessibility of information and media on social platforms influences the decision making processes of individuals engaging in sexual relationships? Um, so how, how do media influence? Because there was some noise. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. I was also yeah, saying yeah, that. Of course, of course, media influences a lot. Yeah, but not, not many times and oftentimes not in a proper way. That's why we really need to educate parents and need to protect children. And if parents themselves can't do it, because many times, especially on this topic, you know, many parents told me, I don't know who, how to talk to my child about this. I just don't know. That's why they can invite us and we need to broaden also this uh, yeah, kind of kind of people, this kind of yeah, base of people uh, yeah, who can do that. Yeah? We need to educate those people yeah? because parents really need help sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, they really don't know. For example, in our case, we started talking with our children on this particular topic about sexual relationship when our daughters turned 12. They all have two years difference. So every two years, I would talk to one daughter Sincerely, they would know about this from me, from mother. <laughs> if we had sons, then father would talk. <laughs> yeah. So in our case, we have daughters, so mother would talk. Yeah. And this is the best way, and to protect them and to share about the value of this, how precious this is. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yes, I, I believe if parents join hands, kind of, and join hearts, then this media won't matter so much. Yeah. Or we can influence media that maybe you can be invited to, to media and then you can share these true values. Yes, they should be heard. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, I see that Marcella has something to say. We should start wrapping this up um, as we don't also want to make this like uh, really long. 
Uh, Can sorry. I just ask something quickly before? Just uh, one, one uh, if possible, because uh, you know, during lecture, I couldn't see any of your comments. And I <laughs> thank you so much for what I, I, I can't see anything. We would really appreciate if you could write a very short reflection. You, you can be, you can send it to WhatsApp or yeah, email. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can send it to me if you don't know my email. So we would really appreciate some feedback. Yeah. Uh, Olga, do you want me to share your email and uh, contact? Sure, you, you, you can share WhatsApp and email. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah. then I'll share it on the chat. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry, Marcella. Uh, you actually made a really good. Um, how do you say? Your, your anyway, just was really good. Yeah. Just just very shortly, what I wanted to say, I was was also working with 10 and 11 years old because they are still uh, very pure and they respond uh, in a very beautiful way to uh, in a beautiful way to explain to them what's going on in this age. Yeah. And also uh, when we talk about the parents, how to guide the proper um, properly children. I think is very important to catch them in time because when they are already 15, they start to rebel and don't listen parents anymore. So I think it's very important to approach them when they are just 10, 11, 12 years old and that's it. Right. Yeah, this is the only thing I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you so much Olga for all your insights um, for this beautiful presentation. Thank you all of you that uh, had a contribution to this discussion. Um, and I truly hope that through this, um, through these insights, through these sharings that Olga, Olga has been doing, that we can convey um, um, all of these to all the young people around the world. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you all. And uh, lastly, yeah, announcements. Um, this is really quick. Uh, we don't have yet the date for the next session, but uh, we are thinking about doing it, it in April, either middle of April or um, in the final, in the, the end of April, oh, sorry, <laughs> English. Um, yeah, and I hope that uh, I can see all of you there and even more people because really if we can get information to reach younger people, uh, it's a really good contribution for the world. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us today. And I hope you have- Can someone a take picture? Day. Maybe Mitty or, I, because I don't know how to take picture. <laughs> I just would like to keep this. I think I can. Well, let me see. We are a lot of people today. If you can turn on your cameras, I'll try. Yeah. So smile. There you go. And wait, don't turn it off just yet because there are more people. So, one more smile. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Love you. Yeah, and wish you, yeah, so that all of your children can be protected and create most beautiful families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We need more. We need more. Of this thank session. you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.